While it's absolutely expected that movie sequels don't just stick to the status quo of the original film, it can be hugely disappointing for audiences when beloved characters don't return for whatever reason. For though filmmakers can find sensible ways to temporarily write characters out of their franchise until the actor is able to return, sometimes they just kill them off between movies. And while they're not always bad, it's incredibly easy for filmmakers to piss off their fan base by sending characters to their graves so unceremoniously. Now, we do already have a video covering this topic, so be sure to check that out first. But with that in mind, I'm Ellie with What Culture here with 10 more insulting ways characters were killed off between movies. Number 10. Tank dies of his wounds from the first movie, The Matrix Reloaded. Tank was an immediate fan favourite in the first Matrix movie, enough that he was quite reasonably expected to return for The Matrix Reloaded. However, the sequel fleetingly reveals that Tank died between movies implied to be a result of injuries sustained during his fight with Cypher in the original film, with new character Link serving as his replacement. As for why actor Marcus Chong got the boot, well, he allegedly had a salary dispute with Warner Brothers and the Wachowskis while negotiating his role in the sequels, leading him to make threatening calls to the filmmaker siblings who in turn rescinded their offer to him. While there's absolutely nothing wrong with the Wachowskis ditching a problematic cast member, did they have to kill his character too? Isn't it much nicer to think that Tank's just off elsewhere in Zion? Number 9. Emma Frost and the other mutants die during the time skip, X-Men Days of Future Past Look, nobody is going to give January Jones five stars for her performance as diamond-sharp telepath Emma Frost in X-Men First Class, but the character was still intriguing enough that she deserved better than this. Frost ultimately didn't return for sequel Days of Future Past, where Magneto simply makes a passing mention that she and several other supporting mutants from First Class were tortured to death by villain Dr. Bolivar Trask in the time jump between movies. Though it's absolutely fair to say that Days of Future Past already had a colossal cast of characters to juggle given that it collided two X-Men timelines together, it's a damn shame that these mutants couldn't have at least been dispatched on screen in a brief action sequence. Number 8. Sam Witwicky died, somehow, Transformers The Last Night When Shia LaBeouf decided that three Transformers movies was enough, Mark Wahlberg was drafted in as the new lead for the fourth film, Transformers Age of Extinction, without even a mention made of Sam in that movie. But for Bay's fifth and final film, Transformers The Last Night, the baffling decision was made to low-key reveal that Sam Witwicky was no more, for some reason. The sequel reveals a secret society called, wait for it, the Order of the Witwickens, who have safeguarded the existence of the Transformers on Earth for centuries, with Sam Witwicky being counted among their number. But astronomer Sir Edward Burton also declares to the new heroes that he's the last surviving member of the Witwickens, in turn implying that Sam has died since we last saw him. It's a bizarre choice, both because there's no explanation for Sam's death, nor any real stakes-raising reason to make Burton the last of the Witwickens. It comes off as weirdly mean-spirited, even if some fans have simply deferred to the belief that Sam has faked his death and is still out there somewhere. Number 7. Tom Hagen gets brushed under the carpet, The Godfather Part 3 Tom Hagen is undoubtedly one of the most memorable, even iconic, characters in the Godfather saga. Yet, after making prominent appearances in the series' first two films, Hagen is nowhere to be seen in The Godfather Part 3, with only a passing mention that Hagen didn't live to see his son Andrew become an ordained Roman Catholic priest. Absolutely no indication is made as to when or how Tom passed away, which only compounded the disappointment many felt by the third Godfather movie as a whole. It stings all the more given that the reason for Hagen's absence is simply that the film's producers refused to pay Robert Duvall's requested salary. He was offered just a fraction of Al Pacino's fee and so he decided to walk. As a result, Hagen's role in the series was basically swept under the carpet with a single line of dialogue and BJ Harrison was appointed as the family's new lawyer advisor. Number 6. Sarah Connor Succumbs to Leukemia, Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines 
perhaps the biggest bummer about the third Terminator movie was the absence of Sarah Connor due to Linda Hamilton understandably feeling that Connor's arc was completed at the end of Terminator 2, not loving the sequel script, and being concerned about James Cameron's lack of involvement. And so, midway through Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines, Sarah's son John reveals that Sarah died of leukemia some time prior, albeit while living long enough to see 1997's Judgment Day pass without incident. Though explaining Sarah's absence without killing her off would admittedly have been extremely difficult, short of making her MIA, for one of the greatest heroines in the history of sci-fi and action cinema to be so unceremoniously offed was a huge disappointment. In the very least, this was eventually undone by 2019's sixth film, Terminator Dark Fate, which brought Connor back into the fold as a decades-hardened Terminator hunter. Hamilton absolutely crushed it as the aged yet still incredibly badass Sarah, even if the rest of the movie's creative choices weren't quite so popular. You know the ones. Number 5. Shaw Gets Tortured to Death, Alien Covenant now, Prometheus certainly had its fair share of issues, but in the very least, Elizabeth Shaw was a compelling and appealing protagonist to lead a new trilogy of alien movies, with the first of Scott's alien prequels teeing up a sequel where Shaw and Android David would venture to the Engineer homeworld. But perhaps in light of Prometheus's divisive reception, Scott pivoted and made the follow-up Alien Covenant far more of an alien movie, with David being effectively thrust into the protagonist's role instead. Though Shaw did appear in an online prologue video released before Covenant hit cinemas, she has only a brief voice role in the movie proper, before it's revealed later on that she was killed and experimented upon by David prior to the events of the film. Shaw was a badass character who deserved better than being mutilated off-screen and her splayed innards shown to us after the fact. At the very least, she could have shown up for a supporting role in Covenant and died sacrificing herself to help the new band of heroes. Number 4. Aura Singh was killed by Beckett, apparently. Solo, a Star Wars story. Solo, a Star Wars story contains a moment that's at once a fan-serving easter egg and a crushing revelation in and of itself. You might not know the name Aura Singh, but you'll certainly recognise the distinctively attired bounty hunter with deathly pallid skin and striking red hair, briefly glimpsed during the Phantom Menace's Tatooine pod racing sequence. Despite her brief appearance, her unique design struck a chord with fans who desperately wanted to know more about her. Many years later, Singh was featured in a handful of episodes of animated series Star Wars The Clone Wars as voiced by Jamie King, but that was the last we saw of her. However, Singh speculated about fate was finally sewn in to Solo when Lando Calrissian mentioned that Tobias Beckett killed her, to which Beckett replied, pushed her, pretty sure the fool killed her. While on one hand it was neat to hear Singh's name mentioned in a major Star Wars movie, that it was only to announce her death was a crying shame. Number 3. Donna dies randomly because Meryl Streep wanted out. Mamma Mia, here we go again. The Mamma Mia sequel is perhaps the only film in history to actively shove Meryl Streep to the periphery and decide it needed less of her. Well, sort of. When a sequel to the hit ABBA-themed musical rom-com was announced, many were naturally excited to see the Oscar-winning legend back among the main cast. Yet, as Streep proved to be strangely absent from the film's marketing materials, they became understandably suspicious. And as it turned out, that's because Streep's character Donna died of an unspecified cause prior to the events of Mamma Mia Here We Go Again. Basically, the film pulls a Godfather Part 2 and spends much of its runtime on decades prior flashbacks with the part of a younger Donna played by Lily James. Donna's death was a bit of an unnecessary bummer, all things considered, and the fact that we don't learn precisely what happened to her didn't help at all. The reason for killing her off between films was apparently due to Streep's unwillingness to return for a major role in the sequel, and in the words of producer Judy Kramer, her desire to leave this to the younger ones. As if to prove to audiences she didn't completely know part of the project though, Streep does appear briefly at the end of the film, showing up as a ghost during the christening of her daughter Sophie's son. Yet given that Streep's name and face were still featured prominently on the movie's posters, it felt like a bit of a crass bait and switch. Number 2. Becky dies in a car accident while pregnant, Clerks 3 Clerks 2 seemingly arrived at a pretty sunny ending for Dante, who ends up proposing to his pregnant girlfriend Becky. 
Clerks 3 picks up 15 years later with the utterly brutal gut punch of a revelation that, shortly after the events of the previous movie, Becky and her unborn child were killed by a drunk driver. It kicks the threequel off on an absolutely heart-wrenching note, and left many frustrated at how aggressively it undid Clerks 2's ending. Though Kevin Smith clearly used Clerks 3 to reckon with his own feelings about death following his near-fatal 2018 heart attack, killing Becky rubbed a lot of fans the wrong way. While it's highly likely that money or scheduling issues prevented Rosario Dawson from having a starring role, there had to be a better way to nudge her out of the frame than killing her off so cruelly. Off on a road trip, perhaps? Number 1. Mutt Dies in the Vietnam War, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny It would seem that Transformers wasn't the only franchise to kick Shia LaBeouf to the curb, as the fifth and purportedly final Indiana Jones movie also dispensed with one of his characters. Now, to be completely fair, Indiana Jones' son, Mutt Williams, wasn't exactly a fan-favourite character in the fourth film, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. But it's not like LaBeouf was working with A-plus material either. All the same, between the overwhelmingly negative response to Mutt, especially the implication that he could take up Indy's mantle one day, and LaBeouf's space of personal issues, the decision was made to keep the character entirely out of the recent Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. But rather than simply forget about Mutt or devote a single line to explaining his absence, the sequel reveals that Mutt died in the Vietnam War, leaving Indy a depressed alcoholic shell of his former self, who even his wife Marion can't stand to be around anymore. While you can argue that the film uses Mutt's death to deepen Indy's characterization, were any Indiana Jones fans really pining to see the whip-cracking hero depicted as a boozy, guilt-rat mope? And that concludes our list. Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below, and while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.